Thanks, Haifeng. I'm Fedor, uh, a postdoc at Caltech, and uh, this is a joint work with Itai Rieli and Yakov Babichenko from Technion. So in this work, we consider an agent uh, persuasion problem. So we are interested in a question of how to supply information optimally to multiple receivers. And in this talk, I will focus on the case of two receivers and a binary state, uh, even though the results generalize. So, okay, now it doesn't work. Uh, yeah, so the setting is as follows. So we have a binary state theta, high or low, uh, prior probability of a high state is P. We have two receivers, they do not observe the realization of the state, but each of them observes a private signal about the state. So uh, for the first receiver, it is S1 from her set of signals, S capital one. For the second receiver, it is S2 uh, from her set of signals, S capital two. And the information structure uh, determines the joint distribution of signals uh, conditional on the state for each of the states. We assume that the receivers know this underlying information structure, so upon receiving their signals, they can perform uh, Bayesian updating. So the first receiver uh, computes her posterior beliefs, belief P1 prime, which is just the conditional probability of a high state given her signal S1. For the second receiver, perhaps she ends up with another posterior belief because she conditions on her signal as two, and know that these posterior beliefs are random variables by themselves because they depend on randomness uh, in signals. And we have another party, we have an informed sender who observes the realization of the state and is free to choose the information structure. He has a utility function that depends on the pair of induced beliefs and uh, his goal is to maximize the expected utility over the information structures, or equivalently, we can think of this problem as maximizing uh, the expected utility over joint distributions of beliefs, uh, P1 prime and P2 prime, that can be induced by some information structure. And such distributions we will call feasible. So what is known about this problem? If we have just one receiver, uh, the problem is easy, uh, as was uh, obtained by Kamenica and Genskov. They realized that uh, the set of feasible distributions in this case uh, has simple structure, and as a byproduct of this observation, uh, the problem has an explicit solution and the sender's optimal value admits uh, an explicit, a closed form formula. Uh, so the sender's optimal value is given by concavification of his utility function. So it's the minimal concave utility function that is pointwise above his utility and this concavification is taken at the point P, at the prime. Uh, when we have uh, several receivers, the problem becomes hard and presumably it does not admit any closed form uh, general solution. And the underlying reason is that the set of feasible distributions uh, become, uh, becomes complex. There are some characterizations in the literature, but they are not, they are not very handy. So the main contribution of our paper and the main takeaway uh, from Waito is that if we add conditioning on the state, then uh, the set of feasible distribution, uh, distribution somehow simplifies. So what I mean by that? Uh, we call a pair of distributions, mu L and mu H, these are distributions on the unit square, a feasible pair of conditional distributions if there exists an information structure such that the pair of beliefs is distributed according to mu L, conditioning, uh, conditional on the low state, and it is distributed according to mu H, conditional on the high state. So how this notion is related to 
uh, the unconditional feasibility, the relation is simple. So a distribution on uh, the unit square is unconditionally feasible if it can be represented as a convex combination of the elements of a feasible pair with weights given by uh, the prior. So this representation is just the formula of total probability. And so what happens is that surprisingly, if you give me a unconditional distribution and ask me whether it is feasible, it's a hard question. But if you ask the same question about the pair, uh, this question becomes simple. And there, uh, the, the way it is possible that one question is hard and an, another is simple is because if you, you are given an unconditional distribution, you can consider all possible decomposition of this uh, unconditional distribution as a pair, uh, as a convex combination of uh, two conditional distributions. So what is the simplification that we achieve? So why, why pairs simplify the problem? So it turns out that feasibility of a pair is determined by its marginals. Namely, uh, if we consider two pairs, mu L and mu H, and mu L and mu H, that have the same one-dimensional marginals, uh, these distributions on the unit square have the same uh, one-dimensional projections, then these two pairs are feasible simultaneously. Which means that if we start from a pair that is feasible, any other pair that has uh, the same marginals is also feasible. And as a result, we can now think of a multi-receiver persuasion as a nested optimization. First, given the marginals, we maximize over all possible pairs with these marginals. And then we have external maximization over marginals that correspond to feasible pairs. Uh, this decomposition shows that uh, multi-agent persuasion uh, is related to an optimal transportation problem. And let me remind you what, what I mean by an optimal transportation problem. So in this problem, we're given two distributions on zero one, so one-dimensional distributions, and the utility function that correspond, uh, that depends on two variables, x and y. And our goal is to find a distribution gamma on the unit square that has mu1 and mu2 as marginals and maximizes uh, the expected utility. So we will denote the value of this problem by T of u of mu1 and mu2. And the standard interpretation is as follows. So mu1 and mu2 are spatial distributions of production and consumption of a certain uh, commodity. And these two distributions can be different, so the produced commodity must be transported to satisfy the demand. And the transportation problem is finding the uh, transportation plan gamma, this distribution on the unit square, that minimizes the cost of transportation. And in our case, uh, we are interested in maximizing the utility, but these two problems are clearly equivalent up to the change of the sum. Uh, this problem can also be seen as a continuous version of uh, the fractional maximal weight matching problem. And this problem, the transportation problem, is omnipresent in economics. So it has applications to auctions, to optimal taxation, to uh, matching markets with transferable utility. And the reason it appears in all this context is because you can think of optimal transportation as a certain archetypal coupling problem. You are given two distributions, you are given two random variables uh, with distributions mu1 and mu2, and you are looking for a joint distribution for a coupling of this random variable uh, variables that is optimal in some sense, that is uh, maximizing a certain uh, linear functional, a certain utility. 
Okay, so how does optimal transportation enters multi uh, receiver uh, persuasion? So we obtain the following theorem. First of all, we allow for uh, the sender's utility function to depend on the state. So now uh, he has two utilities, UL and UH, in both of the states. And it turns out that the value of the persuasion problem uh, is given by a convex combination of the values of two transportation problems, one with uh, utility UL, another with utility UH. But the marginals in these two uh, transportation problems are related one to another. They satisfy a certain admissibility constraint. So what is this admissibility? It, uh, we call the marginals admissible if the following is true. So mu1L and mu1H must form a feasible pair of conditional distributions in a one receiver problem. And similarly, the pair mu2L and mu2H must be a feasible pair of conditional distributions in a one receiver problem. So essentially, the whole complexity of uh, the multi-receiver persuasion is absorbed by, uh, by uh, the transportation problems here. So transportation problems are responsible for determining the, uh, the right correlation between the beliefs. And this external maximization is identical to the one that we have in the one receiver uh, persuasion. So why is this useful? First of all, it enables uh, mathematical tools from transportation literature, and it's a very well-developed literature with multiple tools. And using these tools, in the paper we show that this representation simplifies for some particular classes of utilities and uh, uh, under some extra assumptions you can even uh, get explicit solutions. So what we consider in the paper is the case of one state persuasion where the utility uh, is non-zero just in one state and also cases of submodular and supermodular utilities. But now I want to talk about another uh, reason uh, why this representation is useful. Uh, optimal transportation, a, a connection to optimal transportation always brings a tractable uh, dual problem. And here we find this dual and it turns out that the dual problem uh, to this maximization uh, extends several results that we know in one receiver setting. First of all, it extends uh, Kavyu theorem by uh, Kamenitsa and Genskov, the one that I mentioned. And also it extends uh, the duality representation obtained by Dvorak and Kalatili. So how the dual looks like. So the objective is very uh, simple. So currently we minimize the convex combination of two numbers, VL and VH, but of course uh, the devil uh, is in details and uh, these two numbers must, be, must satisfy some admissibility constraint. So uh, these two numbers are admissible if we can find two functions, alpha one and alpha two on zero one, such that the utility function in the low state is bounded above uh, by VL plus some expression. And the utility function in the high state is bounded by VH minus some expression. So it doesn't really matter what these expressions are. And now I want to give you an uh, intuitive interpretation of uh, these optimization problem. So it turns out that you can think of it the following way. So the value of our persuasion problem with utility functions uh, UL and UH is equal to the minimum of a values of persuasion problem with uh, utility functions VL and VH such that these utility functions VL and VH, they are above UL and UH. And in this new persuasion problem, the optimal strategy of uh, the optimal information structure is revealing no information. 
So it turns out that uh, VL and VH that we can take are exactly the right-hand side of uh, those bounds. So it turns out that we do not need to minimize over all possible persuasion problems uh, that have uh, utilities above the given ones, but it's enough to stick to a particular functional form. And you can think of Cavier theorem as a similar statement. So in the case of a one agent persuasion, uh, the fact that uh, revealing no information is optimal corresponds to the concavity of the utility function. So concavification is exactly taking minimum over all utility functions where non-revealing is optimal. In this sense, you can think of our result as an extension of this CAVU theorem. Also, uh, duality is useful because, I mean, it's a standard use. A dual solution can be thought as a certificate of optimality for the primal problem. So if you manage to guess a solution of the primal problem, and also you guessed a solution of the dual, but you are not sure that these are solutions. But it turns out that the objective functions are equal, then uh, this verifies both of your guesses. So using this logic in the paper, we show, uh, we find a certain class of utility functions where revealing the whole information to one receiver and partial information to another receiver is optimal. Okay, so it's time to wrap up. So the main takeaway is that conditioning on theater helps, may help in multi-receiver persuasion. It connects the problem to optimal transport. This connection enables uh, some new mathematical tools, including duality. And another half-serious half take, takeaway is that these results uh, give another confirmation that uh, many problems of information and mechanism design can be thought of just optimal transportation problems. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Fedor. Very nice talk. Uh, we probably have time for one or two questions. Uh, question from the audience. I'm sorry, I walked in a few minutes late. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, so uh, end receivers and arbitrary state space, uh, arbitrary finite state space. I, I guess you can also extend to uh, infinite number of states and a continuum of states, but uh, we did not go to that direction. But in the paper, we have an arbitrary finite setting. Um, so I had a follow-up question. So do you assume there are ex externalities among the receivers or... Uh uh, and, and unfortunately not. So we cannot handle externalities. Uh, in a sense, uh, this is hardwired in the assumption that sender's utility depends on uh, induced beliefs. So if our senders play a non-trivial game, then higher order beliefs uh, can matter. So our results are also applicable to the so-called simple games where actually you can ignore these high order beliefs, but yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we do not allow for externality. I see, I see, good. I think they have a question from the internet. Jason had a question. <laughs> so, um, so I missed at the beginning. What was, uh, I, I think I can't read it clearly, actually. Uh, I, th I think I, I, I can read it. Yeah. Uh, so Jason says, I missed the beginning. What was uh, constraining signals uh, to the end agents? Are they taking a joint action? Uh, in other words, why is this not an, an independent information design problem? Uh, yeah, so there, there are no externalities uh, among agents, as I mentioned, but uh, the sender's utility depends on uh, the collection of, uh, on the tuple of induced posterior beliefs. And that's the reason the problem does not split into one receiver persuasion. Sounds good. Um, let's thank the speaker again. And uh, yeah, thanks, Pedro.